Hello everyone. My presentation is about removing algebraic data types from constrained horn clauses using difference predicates. Joint work with Emanuele De Angelis, Fabio Fioravanti and Alberto Pettorossi. Let me first give an overview of my talk. I will briefly recall the approach to program verification uh, based on constrained horn clauses. This approach works very well for programs computing on integers and other basic types. However, it encounters some difficulties when we consider programs on algebraic data types such as lists or trees. Then I will present a transformation that aims at removing algebraic data types from constraint horn clauses and derive new clauses on basic types whose satisfiability implies that of the original clauses. This transformation is successful when no intermediate lemma is needed, but may not terminate when these lemmas are indeed required. Thus, I will present a more advanced transformation, which is able to introduce new predicates called difference predicates that have a role similar to lemmas in inductive proofs. Finally, I will show the results of our uh, experimental uh, evaluation and the comparison between our implementation and an extension of, of the SMT solver CVC4 with structural induction. Constraint horn clauses are a class of first order formulas consisting of universally quantified implications. The premise, also called the body of the clause, is a, a conjunction of atoms and a constraint in a given first order theory T. And the conclusion, also called the head of the clause, is either an atom or false. I will use a prolog syntax, writing implications from right to left and omitting uh, the quantifier. The satisfiability of a set S of constraint or clauses is defined as the existence of a model for S union the constraint theory T. Uh, a solution of a set S of constraint or clauses is uh, just a model which can be expressed in, uh, in the theory T of constraints. And a solver tries to compute solutions for the constraint or clauses and there are many solvers for different constraint theories such as linear integer or real arithmetic, booleans, arrays, bit vectors, etc. Let's see how constraint horn clauses are used for program verification through a simple example. Consider a program for some in the first n non-negative integers. The whole triple specifies that the final value of variable y is uh, greater than or equal to the final value of variable x. This property is translated into verification conditions written as constraint on clauses. They correspond to the loop initialization, the loop execution, and the loop exit, respectively. For instance, the last clause states that at loop exit, when x is greater than or equal to n, we must have y greater than or equal to x, and hence, if we have its negation, y less than x, then we derive a contradiction. The whole triple is valid if and only if the constraint horn clauses are satisfiable. Now, by a, a constraint horn clause solver, we can compute a solution, which implies that the clauses are satisfiable, and also expresses the loop invariant in closed form. Now let's consider an example of a functional program computing on lists of integers. The function a sum computes the sum of the absolute values on the L of the elements of a list. And the function list max computes the maximum element on a list. 
we would like to prove that for all lists L, a sum of L is greater than or equal to list max of L. We want to prove this property by a translation into constraint horned clauses. This translation can be done in a straightforward way by defining for each function f a binary relation f of x, y, meaning that f of x evaluates to y. The property holds if and only if the set of clauses is satisfiable. Unfortunately, in this example, and actually many others, no solver can compute a solution simply because no model is expressible in the quantifier-free theory of lists and linear integer arithmetic. An approach that can be followed for overcoming this difficulty is to extend solvers with induction rules. An alternative approach uh, which we have followed in this work, is to transform a set S of uh, clauses on uh, uh, ADTs into a new set S prime, such that S prime is on basic types only, and the transformation is sound. That is, if the transformed clauses are satisfiable, then uh, the original clauses are satisfiable. The advantage of this uh, uh, approach is that we need not extend the uh, solver for combining constraint solving and induction. This idea actually comes from uh, uh, very well-known techniques for program transformation, such as deforestation, uh, whose objective is to eliminate intermediate data structures from uh, uh, functional programs. For transforming constraint on clauses, we follow a very general approach based on unfold fold transformation rules. Let me briefly recall these rules. The unfold rule is just linear resolution. We select an atom A in the body of a clause and we replace the clause by the set of its resolvents with respect to A. The fold rule is a kind of inverse of unfold we replace a conjunction B theta in the body of a clause, which is an instance of the body of another clause, by the instance K theta of the head of the, uh, this latter clause. Other transformation rules are the deletion of clauses with unsatisfiable body and the rewriting of clauses based on the functionality of some predicates. Under suitable technical conditions that we do not have time to illustrate here, the unfold-fold transformation rules together with these other rules are sound. Now take again our A sum list max example and see how we can remove ADTs and in particular lists by unfold-fold transformations. We consider the clause that encodes the property to be verified and we define a new predicate P as the conjunction of the A sum and list max atoms that contain list variables. Uh, the arguments of P are the integer variables uh, occurring in its defining body. Then we unfold with respect to both a max and list uh, a sum and list max, and we get two clauses. The first one has no lists, and the body of the second one has got a variant of the body of the clause defining uh, P. Thus, by the fold rule, we replace that variant by the corresponding P atom and uh, uh, we eliminate the list variable. Uh, we do the same for the clause that encodes the property. At this point we have uh, derived a set of clauses which can be solved by CHC solvers on uh, linear integer arithmetic without induction. Uh, and indeed, Elderica computes 
uh, a simple model in uh, LIA. Thus, the clauses are satisfiable, and by the soundness of the transformation rules, we have a proof that th the property we were interested in holds. Generalizing from our example, here is a sketch of a basic transformation algorithm for removing ADTs. Uh, we start from a set S of uh, clauses. We define new uh, predicates uh, by clauses without ADTs in their head. Then we unfold, apply clause deletion and functionality if possible, and finally we fold to remove uh, uh, ADTs. And we iterate this process until no ADTs are left. A limitation of the basic ADT removal algorithm is that it does not support lemma generation and will not terminate when lemmas are indeed required. Uh, now I will present an extra transformation rule which allows us to generate lemmas through the introduction of the so-called difference predicates. As a running example, I will use a recursive program that implements insertion sort. The function ins inserts an element x in a list L just before the first element y that is greater than or equal to x. The function sort recursively applies ins. We want to prove that the multiset of elements of the input list is preserved by the sort function. Thus we define a count function that counts the number of occurrences of a given element and we prove that for all lists L and integers x, count of x L is equal to count of x sort of L. Following our approach, uh, we translate this property into constraint horn clauses, which, however, cannot be solved by state-of-the-art solvers, because similarly to the a sum list max example, no model is expressible in the constraint theory. Let's see how the ADT removal algorithm works in the insertion sort example. We consider the closal form of the property we want to prove, and we introduce a new uh, predicate P1, whose body is the conjunction of the atoms in the property that contain list variables. The arguments of uh, uh, predicate P1 are the integer variables occurring in the body of its definition. Then we unfold and we rename the variables trying to get a variant of the body of uh, uh, the definition of P1. However, the body of the clauses derived by unfolding match only partially the body of the definition of P1. Indeed, in one clause a subconjunction matches while in uh, another one does not. And the situation is similar in the other clause. Thus it is impossible to apply the fold rule and the ADT removal algorithm keeps introducing new predicates trying to uh, fold eventually and does not terminate. To avoid the failure of the fold rule and the consequent divergence of ADT removal, now we introduce a new predicate, diff1, which we call a difference predicate. Uh, diff1 is defined by the conjunction of the two mismatching subconjunctions occurring in the two clauses. The arguments of diff1 are the integer variables of the body of its definition. Thus, the diff1 is a relation between the values of two mismatching expressions, hence the name of difference predicate. By using the difference predicate, we can uh, uh, replace the mismatching subconjunction in the body of the clause uh, derived by unfolding, and we get a variant of the body of the definition of P1. And we call this replacement a differential replacement. 
This replacement now enables an application of the fold rule by which we eliminate all uh, list variables from the clause. The soundness of differential replacement derives from the fact that we replace a conjunction of atoms by a new conjunction, which is implied. This implication follows immediately from the fact that count is a total function and from the definition of the difference predicate diff1. Thus, if the new clause de derived by differential replacement is satisfiable, then also the original clause is satisfiable. By continuing the uh, ADT removal transformation, we finally get a set of clauses on linear integer arithmetic. The transformation algorithm introduces another difference predicate, diff2, and also additional predicates uh, from P2 to P5. This final set of clauses is satisfiable and indeed uh, Elderica is able to compute a model. Thus, by the soundness of the transformation, the property we wanted to prove indeed holds. Let's read the model of predicate P1. This model states that for any integer a the number b of occurrences of a in the input list is equal to the number c of occurrences of a in the output list. It is also interesting to read the model computed by the solver for understanding how the introduction of different predicates is related to lemma discovery. In the model diff1 of x and k holds if the leaf k is n plus 1 and n is greater than or equal to 0. Thus, if we rewrite the definition of diff1 as an implication in functional notation, we get the following property. If x has n occurrences in the input list s, and the new occurrence of x is inserted in S, then x has n plus 1 occurrences in the output list. And this corresponds to a lemma that can be used in the proof by structural induction of the main theorem. The ADT removal algorithm can be modified by allowing for the introduction of different predicates. We start from a set S of constraint on clauses, define new predicates by clauses without ADTs in their head, uh, then we unfold, apply clause deletion and the functionality of some predicates if possible, and finally we fold to remove uh, algebraic data types if possible, otherwise we introduce uh, suitable difference predicates and fold. Then we iterate this process until we get a set of clauses as prime without uh, algebraic data types. The soundness of the ADT removal algorithm uh, with difference predicates uh, follows from the soundness of the transformation rules. Thus, if the uh, ADT algorithm uh, terminates uh, with output closes S prime, then S prime has no predicates on ADTs, and if S prime is satisfiable, then the original set S of closes is satisfiable. We have implemented our technique on a tool called ADT-REM. We rely on a translator from SMT lib format to uh, constraint or clauses in uh, uh, prolog syntax. Then we apply our uh, ADT removal algorithm and uh, uh, we get constraint or clauses without uh, ADTs 
and uh, uh, then we translate back to constraint on cruises in SMT uh, lib format and uh, finally we apply uh, a constraint on closed solver uh, like Elderica or Spacer on top of Z3 uh, to check the satisfiability of the closes. Here are the results of our experimental evaluation. Our benchmark is a set of 169 satisfiability problems taken from benchmarks of other tools, uh, either theorem provers or verifiers. The problems require the verification of properties of recursive functions on uh, ADTs, such as lists, trees, queues, and heaps. We have run Elderica and Z3 on this benchmark, and uh, uh, as expected for this type of problems, the results are quite poor. Only about 10% of the problems have been solved. Then we have applied ADT removal. The algorithm terminates on 129 problems out of 169. And after ADT removal, uh, the number of problems solved by the uh, constraint on closed solvers is very high, about 95% in the case of Elderica. Note that the contribution of different predicates is substantial. For instance, in the case of Elderica, they increase the number of solved problems from 94 to 122. Then we have uh, uh, compared ADT REM with a tool implemented by Reynolds and Kunchak, which extends the SMT solver CVC4 with induction. We have considered uh, the same encoding of the problems as the one used for our ADT REM tool where natural numbers are encoded as built-in uh, uh, SMT-lib integer type with the linear integer arithmetic theory. CVC4 plus induction solves 74 problems. However, this number is uh, increased a lot if we use uh, a much more sophisticated encoding and we add auxiliary lemmas to the problem formulation as extra axioms. Let me conclude this comparison between ADT REM and CVC4 plus induction by saying that none of the tools is better than the other on all problems. There are problems solved by uh, ADT REM and not by CVC4 plus induction, but also the other way around. To wrap up, we have seen that constraint on closed transformations can aid verifying programs that compute on algebraic data types. We have shown through our experimental evaluation that ADT removal substantially improves standard techniques for constraint on closed solving. And also that ADT removal followed by the application of state-of-the-art constraint on closed solvers is competitive with the extension of closed solving by using induction. The advantage of the transformation-based approach is that we can separate inductive reasoning from constraint on closed solving. As a final remark, I want to recall that in this work we have only proved the soundness of the transformation. There are many other theoretical properties to be studied. In particular, it would be interesting to find sufficient conditions for termination. All right. So are there any questions? Maurizio, are you, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, so may, maybe I start off. Yeah, we can. Uh, so um, 
I didn't understand like how much manual uh, your process is. Do you need to specify this difference part of it and also like kind of do this ADT removal manually or is it like completely automated? No, no, it's completely automated. All uh, uh, examples all in the benchmark were solved uh, automatically. I mean, the transformation was automatic and, the, and then we just run uh, Elderica or Z3. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, other questions? There's, there's one more, more on my side. So you're, you're using this uh, motivation from uh, optimizing kind of functional uh, codes, right? This unfold and fold. Um, so, so uh, and then you, you apply it to, in a kind of a logical word, like if you showed it on the slides in Prolog. So, so, so there's a, then of course the question whether people have not looked at similar optimization for like uh, um, logical programming language like Prolog before. Uh, yes, indeed, it's, uh, let's say the idea, the idea is quite uh, old in a sense, because uh, this idea of deforestation or elimination of variables also in a, a logic programming is quite uh, old. Uh, but in a sense, the application is new because uh, uh, we are not simply trying to optimize programs. I mean, not, not trying to uh, get programs, let's say functional programs or uh, logic programs that are more uh, efficient in the evaluation, but uh, uh, we want to, to get new clauses which are easier to, to solve by uh, solvers, uh, for constraint or clauses. So the, the problem is quite different. We don't have uh, uh, the problems related to the, uh, uh, to the operational semantics of uh, logic programming. We just uh, regard clauses as a, a purely logical uh, formalization for formula. I mean, it's not, uh, nothing related to uh, efficient execution, just... Uh, let's say, a reduction of problems from problems with uh, uh, algebraic data types uh, to problems without. So uh, in the example, oh, in the examples, actually, we, uh, we had to uh, um, examples to sets of clauses on lists and from that set of clauses, we, we derive clauses on integers, which is, I mean, a, a, a big step in a sense, <laughs> not related again to, 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 to efficiency of, of execution. Okay, thanks. So I can't see another question. Well, I, I would have one last one. So, so for these benchmarks you found there in the SMT lib, do they have a similar motivation in your examples? Were they originally um, functional programs or are they from different um, applications? Uh, so the examples were taken from uh, uh, benchmarks uh, uh, for um, uh, theorem provers. Oh, I uh, so Clem, for instance, Isabel, this kind of, where, where they try to, to prove properties of, of fun, mainly of functional properties. Okay. So, yeah. so there is this translation from, uh, let's say, the, 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 the language of the theorem prover into SMT lib. And actually, we, we, we started from that, so from the formalization SMT lib. And then uh, we, we have an automatic translation from SMT lib format into this uh, prologue uh, with constraints. And, uh, and then uh, we, we reason uh, inside this, uh, this other format. But basically the, the original problems were, uh, let's say, more or less usual properties of recursive functions yeah, like, okay. uh, I don't know, reverts or sorting and these kind of things. Cues also, cues, heaps. Okay, th I thank you again. So we're 